So as you may know, I'm a qualified dentist and a qualified dentist in the UK usually makes between 100 and 150 thousand dollars per year. But when you first start out, that's when a dentist will earn maybe 30 or 40 K. So it's crazy for me now, eight years in my trading career, making almost an annual salary as I would at the beginning of my journey as a dentist in just a single day. Whenever somebody comes on YouTube and says they made 25 K in a day, yeah, it sounds like a red flag. So I'm not here to just be another one of those guys. I'm different and I'm going to show it and prove it. So if you've been following along on my journey on Twitter, you'll see for the last nine weeks, I've been giving public signals ahead of time, the entry ahead of time, the stop loss ahead of time, where to take profit, when to break even, and the full analysis and breakdown. Anybody can give a winning trade signal here and there, but who's really doing nine weeks in a row? Everything there on Twitter for you to verify and check. And not only that, I've done multiple videos of me breaking down all of those positions, showing you that it's not hindsight, but it's actually in real time, showing you the context of winning trades with losing trades and the whole wonderful nuances of day-to-day -day price action, how you apply the knowledge, gaining market experience, Experience, gaining market IQ. So in the last nine weeks, I've done about 33 public signals and a total gain of about 41%. And today I'm going to show you just two of those positions where I was able to bank about $25,000 in a single day. So I'm going to show you the full proof. I'm going to show you my account statements to show that's the money I actually made. I'll show you the MT4 execution and I'll show you the live timestamps of my analysis given publicly ahead of time on Twitter. So let's jump right in. So this is where the day began. I'm talking about a Euro USD signal. I've shown the sell limit at the top of the screen you can see exactly what time I'm taking the screenshot it's live this is in Dubai time you see the sell limit and it hasn't triggered yet you can see my entry and you can see my stop loss so the analysis of why I'm taking this trade is because I've taken previous days liquidity so this is previous days liquidity the dotted line on my custom made indicator so we've had an inducement of previous days high that area was actually an inducement area so a small form of SMC trap but we have another real SMC trap over here where we have build up, trend line liquidity, run of liquidity, which SMC traders love, a sell side liquidity rate, and then a break of structure. So now what are SMC traders doing? They're waiting for the retracement and they're entering in this area. They are swiftly taken out. So we are not only seeing high of previous day liquidity, we're seeing Asia high liquidity and smart money trap liquidity. So we've had three levels of inducement. Then we've arrived to my main supply zone and I'll cover all of this in detail in a sec. And then we see a lower time frame shift. And that's the lower time frame model that I was looking at, where we have a minor buildup, an inducement, and then a break of structure approaching my London time window, 8 a.m. UK time. So overall, a wonderful setup. I outline my break even or where I'm going to reduce my risk. And then my partial points at one to three restored, as always, standardized, and at one to 10 restored, standardized. So this signal was given live ahead of time. Quite a few of you saw it. I challenge any one of you to show me any manipulations or anything I'm doing that's not transparent as I'm saying. And then as we continue on, we track that trade. The signal is then tapped in and then we see that trigger of basically the analysis I was showing previously, how it's playing out. And I'm talking about here is hit TP1 and then we continue to track the trade. And I continue to talk about the complexity of the day. So I'm talking about, okay, well now we've had this trend line build up, this inducement low and a bullish break of structure. So I'm saying there's things to consider. As we approach London Open and the window, Gio has shown his hand that we can still be a little bit more bullish. I'm using EU and GU correlation. Um, so I'm thinking this could be a potential reversal sign. So we have to be careful and monitor. So I'm seeing on GU, it's looking like this. We're seeing not only a build up and inducement, we're seeing bullish internal price action and price can come to this supply point. So I'm thinking, okay, I have to be careful because if GU can come higher, EU might take me out. Then as we continue on, I say interesting update and I'm just giving the updates of, okay, this is where GU I wanted it to go. It's now heading towards where I anticipated after doing another inducement over here. So therefore I'm saying Euro USD when it's correlating like that, I see prices coming to the mitigation after doing a buildup and giving an internal break of structure. So I give a second sell entry. Perfect stuff. Interesting update uh, as you can see over here. And then as I continue on, this is all live and tracked we see price is reacting. GU on that same zone I mentioned gives a reaction. EU off the entry I was looking at gives a reaction, but it doesn't trigger in my re-entry. So, oh well, at least I'm in the initial entry. And then as we continue on, we see the profits floating further and further, and we see how those reactions are continuing on. So let's give a full track of all of that, and eventually price going all the way to the final TP, slowly, slowly, and then we have all of the updates there. So if you follow along these tweets, I'm not only giving just the initial sell signal, I'm also giving continual updates. So we can see that's my final TP, where I'm taking the one to 10 risk reward, and I've shown the whole analysis, the whole journey alongside it. So as you guys know, the way I take partials at one to three risk reward, I take 50% at the full volume at one to 10. So a full win for me is 1.5 R plus 5 R equals 6.5 R, a full win for me. That's exactly what I gained. 6.5 R on EU and 6.5 R on GU, risking 1%. It became about 12.5% in a day on two signals. Let's show you quickly the other signal. I'm going to give you a full breakdown shortly, but I want to give the second signal 
over here. So I say, look, first signal of the day, 1.5% banked. So I hit first TP on EU. And then I give a EU sell signal. So I'm saying this is my entry. This is my stop loss live ahead of time. And I'm also showing how I'm going to execute it. You can see exactly the time I'm taking the screenshot, 12.32 Dubai time. We can compare that to real price action. And then as we continue on, we see that GU then goes on to react off the exact area I said, reversing with basically no drawdown, phenomenal. And also seeing my MT4 execution. And then we see it all tracked, okay? And then towards TP2, smashes TP2. So we got that full one to 10 and that's my MT4 execution. I'm gonna go ahead and give you a full analysis, but also my broker receipts. You can see I ex actually executed it. And we can see in the comments, so many people taking the same trade. And I'm gonna get my editor to show you people saying they passed a funded challenge, people taking hundreds of dollars on their funded accounts and so many people taking the execution with me. The proof is all there with dozens and dozens of traders taking this trade alongside me and profiting and 100,000 people viewing it almost. And I challenge any single one of you to call me out and show me what I did as a manipulation. Show me what I did wrong. Show me what was a fraud. Everything is fully as transparent as can be. Now, let's quickly jump into my TradeZella. So on TradeZella, I give the further confirmation that I executed this trade. You can see I entered over here on EU, exactly as I was showing as my limit. TP1 on this candle and then TP2 right over here. And that banked me $11,000. I executed about 60 lots of it. Yeah, 60 lots, as you can see, I executed my stop loss right here. I'm risking about $2,000 stop loss there and average risk reward around there. That's my EU position logged in my journal. And again, trades that are super useful because I, I can then log the trade. I can upload a screenshot of my analysis, leave my commentary, and then it will track everything. It will track my equity curve, it will track my win rate, it will, it will give me reports. And it's just a good way to manage everything that I'm doing. And my other position is on GU. This one's slightly larger lot size, around 70 lots, because I was using profit of the day. I thought I could scale in a little bit more. Risking similar, around $2,000. And this one netting me a little bit more, 13,000 in profit. So 11,000 plus 13,000 brings me around the $25,000 mark. This one again, exactly the entry that I'm showing you on Twitter, where we have supply zone, and then we have equal highs, run of liquidity. And then we have that over here. So we have the initial supply zone, equal highs run of liquidity BOS, and then execution exactly as I mentioned it. And then my first partial point, as I mentioned it on this candle at one to three, and then one to 10. So let's now jump into trading view and give you a full real breakdown of these trades. So let's start off over here on the one hour time frame. And what do we see on the one hour time frame? We're basically seeing that we're in a bearish market. We can see we have this small run of liquidity that took an inducement of that point that led to this bearish low, making a lower low. Then we had this area, the last lower high that made an internal or fractal lower low that went on to give a bullish break of structure relative to this area. Then we came back, failed to make a lower low. In fact, we respected. So when we failed to make a lower low and we've gone on to make a higher low, we know we've established a bullish complex pullback. Internal higher high, internal higher low, internal higher high, internal higher low, higher high, and so forth. What I'm noticing is price is coming to this decisional point. It's a decisional point that led to the break of structure. So I know price is arriving to a good area. I'm also seeing this trend line liquidity that's being built up. When I come to my M15 and I bring my drawings back on, this is how I started my analysis where I was thinking, okay, I have an area of interest, this supply zone that led to a break of structure. So something that I like. Next, I have this liquidity pool that's building up equal highs right below my POI. I like that. Then I have all of this trend line liquidity being engineered. Liquidity pool. Remember, the market goes from inducements to liquidity pools. It's hunting for liquidity. It's hunting stops and it's hunting orders. So when you see that price is either going for liquidity or rebalancing price, going for these inefficiencies, when you see that that's how the market is moving, you just find those zones. So I know that this is going to go to that supply zone, close off an inefficiency and target this next liquidity. So that's how I was building my thesis. Then I bring in my custom indicator to show my daily cycle plays. I can see my now Asia range and let's jump down to an M5. And it's exactly as I mentioned on Twitter, I have liquidity pool number one, smart money trap, equal highs, run of liquidity, break of structure. Love it. Then I have this liquidity of trend line traders, but not only that, I'm starting to notice the details where I see who was in control. I see build up an inducement, push out. So I know the buyers are in control. Once again, I see build up, inducement, mitigation, buyers are in control. So I'm starting to see that even though right here, the inducement was for sellers, that inducement has been overpowered by this buying inducement. So I know that the buyers are in control. This was a trap because I saw who was in control by seeing the inducement of that. Perfect. I see the buyers are in control. If the buyers are in control, where are they going? They're going for liquidity. So I know that it's not going to respect here. They're going to take the smart money trap. And what does it do? Smart money traders come in, gives them a small reaction and then takes them out. Once again, comes to Asia high, takes them out. And then right over here, we also have a small inducement. 
we have that tiny inducement there. So we know that that is an inducement candle. Price comes in and induces all of that out. So I can see that this strong manipulations of Asia High, Smart Money Trap, and also this zone over here. Then we come into our supply zone. We close a higher time frame inefficiency, fair value gap, whatever you want to call it. And then we are approaching our time window. So I jump down to my M1 and that's where I start to get interested because I know if I've taken enough liquidity, I've taken three forms of liquidity. If that is enough, I should see a reaction. I wait for that confirmation of a reaction. I wait for my time-based manipulation and I look to execute to target my liquidity pools below. And to confirm that, what do I need? I need once again an inducement. If I see the raid, if I see the run of liquidity, it's showing me who's in control. If I see runs of liquidity low and then a push out higher, I know the buyers are in control. If I see an inducement high and a push lower, I know that the sellers are in control. So I'm going to navigate using that framework. And what do I see? Price comes in to my supply zone, builds high, does an inducement. So I know that okay, sellers are starting to get in control. I need to see not only an inducement, I want to see, does it follow through? Does it sustain? So once I've seen that inducement, what do I see? I see price do the inducement from the supply zone and give a break of structure. This higher low that went on to make the higher high goes on to make a lower low. Wonderful stuff. Then all I do is find my entry requirements. So I find a relevant IFC, refined IFC, preferably using my inefficiency imbalances. And then I take my entry based on that stop loss covering the high like so. And that becomes my entry number one. That's exactly what I showed you on my trade Zella over here. You can see my entry over here, my stop loss over here. That's exactly how I executed it. Once again, you can see it on my Twitter where I'm showing you my MT4 limit. So you got my MT4, you got my live tweets ahead of time, calling it ahead of time, and you've got my trade Zella, and then also my full explanation of my strategy, which never deviates or varies. My strategy is playbooks, it's itemized, it's fixed, it's confluenced, it's all there. So once I've taken that trade, I also predefined where I'm going to take partials, partial one, partial two. That's all predefined. And then I just let the trade play. And then you see my full tracking on Twitter of how I let that trade continue out. So you have the before and after and everything you'll need. And then what I'm doing basically is monitoring the trade to confirm if it's going to go in my direction. How do I monitor the trade? I follow the inducements price action laws. I follow the language of price. I read the laws of the market. Remember, the market is not random time-based manipulations that I tell you all the time. My strategy is not random. My confluence is not random. These things are powerful, which is why I speak so proudly of it because I know it works. I see buildup. I see once again an inducement and a mitigation into my supply. If that doesn't impress you enough, when does it happen? It happens based on my indicator, custom made, 8 a.m. London open to the minute. Time-based manipulation to a T. How many examples have I shown you this on Twitter and on YouTube? How many examples do you need before you're going to start believing? Time-based manipulation, trading away from the inducement of the day. So not only do we have inducement number one to show me sellers are in control, after we've taken a bunch of liquidity and come to a supply zone, then we get an inducement. It's not random. Then we get another inducement on London Open to the minute. Again, not random. That leads to a break of structure. And then what do we see? Price goes and does mitigations and follow throughs. That's showing me that the sellers were in control and we see a strong reaction. And then it continues all the way down to my TP. No resistance, no nothing, just very direct. And that's stress-free trading. You can kind of see. I didn't have to deal with any retracements, any stress, any headaches. It goes from my entry to my TP in one swift move in the space of about two hours and 30 minutes. From entry to one to 10, 6.5% profit gained on my account, around $11,000 in this case, without having to stress. No retracements, it's just optimized for intra-session volatility. And again, that's where I cap the trade because that's how I like to manage my system. My profit taking is optimized for my data over a thousand trades. But if I was trading this based on just price action, if I was taking subjective partial taking, I know that price would go to target this liquidity pool that I mentioned. Asia low liquidity, smart money trap, which, which this is now. This is obviously a clear smart money trap. Why is it a clear smart money trap? Again, those SMC traders are going to be pissed off because what are the SMC traders seeing? They're seeing equal lows. They're seeing run of liquidity. They're seeing bullish break of structure, making a higher high. They're seeing a retracement and they're going to be buying in this area. Smart money traders are looking to buy based on that smart money trap. I know that this is all a trap. I know there's all liquidity over here. So I know the sales are going to sustain. It's not random. The market is not random. We follow good strategies. We follow good information. And then time-based manipulation again. In my key window, as you guys know, my New York window, what happens? We get once again, build up, inducement, New York window, 2 p.m., follow through. Is that random? Completely not random. And what do we do? We take out all of that liquidity I mentioned, and that leads to a 1 to 27. Obviously, I took my partials way before. But that's 1 to 27 potential of a trade. And again, I called it ahead of time. This is what I forecasted. I said I want to take all of this liquidity on my initial tweets, not only on EU, but also on GU. What am I saying here? I want to target that liquidity. I said it before, ahead of time. And, and then we see the result. It's exactly what happened. And you also see 
a profit right there. Now let's move on to my GU trade. My GU position was a little bit more profitable because I had a larger lot size because I'd already banked my first partial on EU, which I just showed you. By the time I was already 1.5% up on my EU position, then I found an opportunity on GU with very similar confluences. So let's break that position down. So GU is in a very similar position on the higher time frame. If I come to the one hour time frame, what do we see? Very similar to what I saw in EU. We saw an inducement like we saw in EU that led to a push down and a break of structure. Perfect. Then price is coming to this form of supply, not a preferred supply. It's not a decisional or an extreme, but it's a supply point. And I see price comes in and reacts. And what do I see? Huge bullish trend line which eventually becomes liquidity. So I knew that I was coming to a supply, I was targeting this liquidity, and I just needed a daily cycle variance and lower time frame confirmations to confirm the higher time frame. So this is how I trade. I don't do a top-down analysis. You've seen why I don't do a top-down analysis because I made a full video on it, explaining it in detail. What is more important than a top-down analysis? Yes, the higher time frame is important, but just like when you learn to ride a bike, you need your training wheels. When you become an advanced trader, you don't need your training wheels anymore. You don't need the higher time frame and a top-down analysis in the same way anymore. It's useful, it's relevant, but you don't need them. M1 is so much more important. That's when you really learn to ride your bike without your training wheels. So let's jump right down to M5. I gloss over the higher time frame very quickly, and then I jump right into my session intraday price action and M1 confirmations. And this is what it revealed to me. So this is my daily cycle variance. Let's bring on my drawings. You can start to see the POI was slightly higher, which is why I was trading EU and not GU, because EU came to the POI, GU did not. So that had a bit of doubts, so I waited. I wasn't keen on it. But it's a similar concept to where I have where I have this liquidity, this downwards trend line, and price comes in, and it does an inducement of that. But before that, what do we see? I see a lovely build up over here and inducement right there. So that is showing me smart money zone. Smart money traders were interested in there. And what happened to those smart money traders? They got induced out. So once again, another example, how many do I have to show you of smart money traps? That was the inducement that showed me that the buyers are still in control because of that smart money trap. So that is showing me price can come higher. And not only that, what are we seeing once again? I'm seeing equal highs, run of liquidity, push down. What does that mean? Another form of smart money trap. Again, smart money trap does not mean against ICT, against SMC. No, I'm talking about novice rookie SMC traders that leave liquidity in the market, that get it all wrong. Here's the proof. Once again, equal highs, run of liquidity, and then SMC reaction to really invite them in, swiftly induced out. It's not random. So when we see smart money traps, once again, this trend line liquidity, once again, and Asia high liquidity, once again, and then price takes all of it out. It doesn't come to my supply zone, so I'm not interested. But when I go down to the M1 time frame and I watch the details, I need to see when the buyers are out of control and the sellers are in control. And I show it on Twitter and I say, look, we had this inducement. Perfect. I like that. We had a strong bearish reaction. We took out this trend line, so I'm liking it. But it came to my demand. I don't like that. So it's not valid for me. I didn't take the trade. As much as you need validation criteria and confluences to take a trade, you need invalidation criteria because you have to be a controlled, restricted trader. The more restricted you are, the more profitable you'll be. So therefore, I need to have exact criteria of what cancels a trade for me. This is one of them. And then I saw internal push out. This area failed to make a low, internal higher low, internal higher high, internal higher low, inducement, push out. And this is a word I tracked on Twitter. I said, look, this is what I'm seeing, so I'm not keen on it. But I did mention we can get a reaction over here. I see it closes that fair value gap, does an inducement. So I know that we have inducement one and inducement two. So now I'm seeing a bearish switch. And that's what I'm going to be tracking. I'm like, okay, the buyers are in control. I've taken a bunch of liquidity. I've taken smart money traps. So maybe now the sellers are in control and the sellers are ready. I see two forms of inducement. It doesn't fit my full plan because I wasn't in a POI. That POI is right above. So even though I had everything else, I had London open, I had a build up and inducement, I had a supply zone with a minor inducement, I had everything I basically needed on the lower time frame, but I was missing a criteria. So I don't take the trade. That takes discipline. You don't just have FOMO. You don't jump in the trade because if the market gives you an opportunity, you take it. If it doesn't, it's not your day. Be okay with walking away. There's a difference between being an analyst and an analyst can call the market. It can watch plays and it can say direction. But a trader is somebody that puts confluences and probability behind those ideas. And that's what a trader's job is, is to know that this is probably going to be bearish. I can see the signs, but I can't trade it. That's the difference between an analyst and a trader. When I see that, okay, I get another break of structure and I've taken out that demand. Well, now I'm more interested. And then I see price comes back up. I find my entry. I give that as a signal on Twitter. I've taken profit on EU already, which I showed on Twitter. So for me now, I'm not trading with my money. I'm trading with the house's money. 
And that's what I show online. And that's what I showed, That's what I said on Twitter. I said, first signal of the day, which was on EU, 1.5% banked on TP1. Now using that profit, I have a GBP, GBP USD sell signal. And I give the exact entry. I give the exact MT4 entry and stop loss and explanation. Follow the quoted tweet for play-by-play -play M1 read, which I've given over here. And we can start to see exactly as it played out. Exactly so. So that's TP1 and then eventually TP2 being met. So what else is there really to say apart from just summarizing it now? TP1 was at one to three risk reward and then TP2, there was no real confusion or anything to read. We were just having build up, inducement, mitigation of that area. Once again, mitigation of that area, mitigation of that area, mitigation of that area. It's showing me sellers are in control. There's nothing to read here. And then I continue on. It's met my target. So I'm done. I'm done with the trade. I'm done with the day. But I know that I had all of this trend line liquidity that I called and a reason for my trade. So I not only do I have my Asia low liquidity, not only do I have this smart money trap liquidity, which I can extend out, I have all of this trend line liquidity right here that I was expecting to be taken out. So now, even though I'm out of the trade, I've done my trading part, but I'm still an analyst. So my analysis tells me this is still bearish, but my trader side of me tells me you're done with the trade. That's what your data has told you. That's what your trading plan has told you. That's what your journal has told you. So no further action. But I know that this is likely to go further and I just follow and see if my idea was correct. So what happens? I get New York open. New York open is happening. It's coming to that block. Okay. We give it a few more candles. New York open manipulation. Okay. Follow through. And there we are. And when does the volatility kick in? In my key window. So time-based manipulation once again. Smart money traders would be interested in that block. Price comes up, induces them out. And then New York open inducement. And then follow through in my key window. What is it doing? It's taking out these smart money traders that were trading that trend line off that SMC zone and is going for all of this trend line liquidity, Asia low liquidity and intra-session volatility for my New York window. Need I say more? So again, this trade, even though I capped it at 1 to 10, had a lot more potential, 1 to 30. But remember, I have optimized my system for data. Watch my previous videos where I've explained why I do this. On this trade, it would have served me best to hold the trade full volume to final TP. But again, I'm not trying to optimize for one trade. I'm trying to optimize for hundreds of trades. I'm trying to optimize my portfolio and my trade plan. Therefore, I don't take my feelings on one trade. I look at my data over a thousand trades and I decide my take profits based on my data. And my data is showing me that even though I left money on the table here, on other occasions where price goes a little bit in my favor and reverses, on those situations where I wouldn't take profit because it didn't reach my level, I still take profit because of my profit taking system. Go ahead and watch those videos because I explain that in detail and it's so important for you to get because that's where you can increase your profitability without having to change your strategy, without having to change your confluences, without having to have a better win rate, not a better risk reward, nothing. Same trader, better profit management equals more profit overall. And that's powerful. So to just wrap up this trade, go through my Twitter and you can see everything journaled and logged there where I give all the proof you'll need. For example, the MT4, the final trade on EU and everything else in between. And then you have my TradeZilla verification over here too, where you have 11K on this trade and also 13K on this trade, about 25K in a day. You have my MT4, you have the live signal, you have the analysis. And I've done this for nine weeks publicly, given signals about 30, publicly profited about 40%. And by the way, this is not new. I've been doing this for years. So ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see more from me, go ahead and follow my Instagram, follow my Twitter, all of that good stuff. But more importantly, follow my private Instagram account, my free trade club, because that's where you really get access to me. And that's where you really see the behind the scenes magic. So ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that video. And hopefully you're starting to see those breakthrough moments, those light bulb moments, those aha moments where you're starting to see M1 is so powerful. Daily cycle is so powerful. Time-based manipulation, inducements, market structure, read correctly, smart money traps, all of these things that I've been speaking about for so long, hopefully you're starting to see and connect those dots. And I'm trying to be as transparent as I can be in an industry full of lies, fake MT4 profits and rented Lamborghinis. I'm trying to do something different. I'm trying to be as credible, authentic and transparent as I can be to show you I'm not one of those fluff guys. I don't need to be a trader. I have a good career path. I have a good backing thanks to my family, my parents that I have a dental degree. I don't need to be doing this. I'm doing trading because it really works for me. And if it wasn't working for me, I wouldn't be out living in Dubai, living a great life. I'll be back home as a dentist. And if you're in a situation where you're a little bit hopeless right now, you don't really know where to begin, your strategy hopping and you don't know what to do, go ahead and watch all of my videos and go ahead and watch all of my breakdowns on Twitter because you have so much breakthroughs there for free. I don't need anything from you. Just go ahead and study and apply what you learn and let me know how it goes on. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and I'll catch you in the next one.